As a GEPF member, have you ever thought about how much of your money GEPF could pocket if you opted to retire and then passed away within the first five years? Now, you know that your spouse could receive 50% of your income, but what happens to the remaining 50%? And what would happen if your spouse also passes away within the first five years? Or if you have no spouse, it means that GEPF could pocket everything. Now, if you're looking for a solution that ensures that you're able to earn an income that allows you to live comfortably, as well as putting you in a position where you can leave a legacy, not just for your spouse, but for your kids and generations to come, this video is going to be guiding you on the step-by-step -step solutions you must put in place. Now, I'm Deva Naika, and I help GEPF members who are wanting to resign, protect their money from the market, earn an income for life without paying a huge amount in tax. Now, if you're wanting to reach out to me for more information, I'll share details at the end of this video. Let's get started straight away. The first thing I want you to bear in mind is what would take place or how do you calculate the loss, right? So what you do know is that in this instance, you have your funds sitting within GEPF. And we're looking at what would transpire if you had opted to retire. Now, the best way to do this is to analyze this very closely using your GEPF statement. So I'll put one up, but you can use your GEPF statement when you're working with this. What I want you to be very mindful of here is at the top of your statement, page one, you should see a date. Now, you want to get that date very closely aligned to the date that you are actually are leaving. Meaning if you are leaving in six months time or a year's time, contact GEPF, ask them for a statement as at the time that you are leaving, right? The month that you are leaving. The reason I'm asking you to do this is then the figures become a lot more accurate. You can actually then do the calculations, getting a lot more clarity. But again, in this video, I'll do all the calculations for you using this particular statement. You just follow along and um, you can watch along. And also you can do the calculations on your own. If you need to pause the video, you can do that as well. Now, you notice from this particular member statement, you'll see that the monthly pension here is 28,386 rands. That's the monthly pension. And in addition to that, there's a lump sum value of 1.2 million. Now, the first thing I want you to do is analyze the 28,000, right? So we're doing this in a step-by-step -step calculation, heading back to the iPad to calculate it for you. So you're gonna take the 28,386 rand. So here it is, 28,386. Now, I want you to multiply this by 12 months because we want to see how much is that for a 12-month period. And in addition to that, I want you to multiply that figure by five years. Now, what I want you to know is I'm not taking into account the annual increases here, right? So, you know, if this member had to pension off, the member would receive an annual increase from GEPF. In this calculation, I'm not taking that into account. I'm also not going to take into account the fact that GEPF is going to invest this member's money and they naturally would get some type of growth from it over the five-year period. So I'm not taking that into account either. So it should balance out uh, in any event. Let's do the calculation. I'll do it for you. You follow along using the calculator that I'll bring up on the screen. Again, you can use your figures when you're working with this. So I'm looking at this member's figures is 28,386. I'm multiplying it by 12 months. So you're going to do the same on your end. You multiply your figure by 12 months and you multiply it by five years because we want to get what the total is over that five-year period. And this is the first figure that you want to make a note of. You can see for this particular member, it's 1703, 160. So we'll head back, make a note on your page that this is the figure, right? That you would use. Now, obviously you'll use your figure. I'm calculating using this particular member. Now, in addition to this five-year income, let's recap, that's the income the member would receive over a five-year period, right? That's why we calculated over five years. In addition to that, we have to add the gratuity. Now, the gratuity that is here for this member, you can see it up on the screen, that is 1,257,000. Again, when you're doing your calculation, you're going to follow along using, you're going to fill in your figure, right? So 1,257,641. So your next step is you're going to add these two figures, right? So have a look at how I've done this. You're taking your five-year figure, you're adding this figure, the lump sum gratuity. And what we're getting here is what the total payout that GEPF would make, right? Again, I'll do it for you, pulling up the calculator. Here's the first figure, 1,703,000. I'm adding the gratuity, one, two, five, seven, six, four, one, 
So the total that this member would receive is 2.9 million. So let's make a note of that. So 2,960,801 rand. So heading back to the iPad, now you'll get your own calculation. In fact, maybe watch the video a second time around. First time, just understand the framework, what I'm trying to teach you here. And the second time around, you can do the calculation on your own. So it means this member would receive 2.19 million. That's the total payout this member would receive, right? Now, the next step I want you to do, very important, so pay careful attention. I want you to go and have a look at what your resignation value is, right? Now, the reason I asked you to get a calculation for the future uh, or closer to when you are leaving, if you have a look at your statement, the top, sec the, the top part of page two of your statement, right? It says that the estimated pension benefits are the figures that we're seeing here. Now, notice it says normal retirement, and it says in this particular statement, it's, point, it's referring to a point number nine. Now, I'm going to refer to that point here because I want you to see the calculations, right? What GEPF is saying here is normal retirement age, as a, according to GEPF's rules, is age 60, meaning if a member's retiring, it's, it's age 60. Then they're going on further to say that the calculations that are here assume that you are retiring at 60, meaning if you are not yet at 60, these figures are not correct. Let's assume you're 57 or you're 58. These figures are now calculated to age 60, right? It's already in the future. This is why when you're getting the statement, request a statement that's close to the date that you are actually are leaving, right? GEPF can help you with this because everything is based on formula, so they can provide you with a statement. Now, if you are older than 60, let's just assume you're 61, then these statements are still not, these calculations are still not right because they're showing you a value as at 65, right? You'll see it as you read through the fine print, which means if you are leaving before, the figures are gonna be adjusted. Why am I sharing this with you? Remember, if the figures that you're seeing here are not now, let's say they're a year or two or three years from now, the resignation value is accurate. That's as at now. So your resignation value over time, the longer you with GEPF will start to increase. This is why you wanna get them very closely aligned. Now for this particular member, you'll see the resignation value sits at 5.1 million. So that's the figure that I wanna make a note of. And I'm noting it here onto the iPad. So 5,119,863. Now here's a key part. From here, I want you to minus this figure, right? So we're minusing 2960801. And the reason that we're doing this, I'm gonna share with you now. So 2960801. The reason we're calculating this difference is I wanna see, this is the member's resignation value minus the total amount that GEPF is gonna pay. That's gonna give you what the shortfall is, right? Meaning if you passed away within the first five years, this is exactly how much GEPF could profit. Now I'm saying exactly, but remember it's an approximate, right? Because I haven't taken into account the annual increases, neither have I taken into account that GEPF is investing this money and they'll have some growth. So you're gonna put in your resignation value, as I'm showing you here, minus 29608801. Again, you're gonna put in your figures. For this particular member, the figure that this member would lose is approximately 2.1 million. So what does this mean for this member? If this member had to opt to retire, let's say it's your calculation and it's all your figures. So if you had opted to retire, GEPF is gonna be paying you a monthly income. They're also paying you the lump sum gratuity. Now the income that they're paying you is guaranteed for the first five years, right? So even if you pass away within five years, you're still gonna get the guaranteed income payout, right? In this case, it's the 1.7 million plus the 1.2, which means the total guaranteed payment is 2.9 million. But if you analyze it carefully, your, your resignation value might be a lot higher than that. So I'm calculating the difference, I'm working on the resignation value, minus the amount that GEPF has paid out, that's gonna give you the figure that you could lose in the first five years. Bearing in mind, I'm gonna say it again, I have not taken into account the fact that GEPF will increase this income every year, so they might increase it to inflation or below inflation, but there is an increase here every year. I also haven't taken into account that the money that's sitting with GEPF, all of the capital, they naturally are gonna invest it, right? When they invest it, they're going to make a profit. When they make a profit, it means that this figure could be a lot higher. But for now, this is a starting point. It puts you in a position where you're able to understand exactly how much 
GEPF could pocket or how much of your family's money or your hard-earned money could be lost if you don't structure this thing properly. Now, what's the next step for you to take? You know that there are only one, two routes that are available for you as a, a GEPF member. You could either opt to retire or you could opt to resign. Those are one of the only two, those are the only two routes that you have. If you're opting to resign, there are still two options here. You could opt to have this money paid in cash. If you have it paid in cash, you're going to be taxed severely, right? You know that. Alternatively, you could opt to have this money transferred to an approved fund. If you're moving to an approved fund, as I've shared in my previous videos, please watch them if you haven't seen them. But when you are moving money to an approved fund, this is where you can create tax savings. Now, the danger is generally GEPF members, often I find members wanting to get the tax or wanting to do the resignation planning very late, right? So your first step is you want to do a proper comparison. You want to analyze exactly what retiring has to offer you against what resignation has to offer you. Basically comparing them side by side, looking at the lump sum, looking at the income that you get, looking at legacy, investing, looking at tax. You want to analyze this very deeply. Once you start to compare all those elements, you can then see which one is more appropriate for you. And then naturally that's the decision that you'd make, right? Once you know. Your steps thereafter is assuming you are in this position right now. So let's say this is where you are right now. And assume you are leaving in two years, three years, or four years from now, I'm going to say X years. What you want to start doing, if you are aiming at resignation, you want to ensure that you laying the foundation right now, right? You're laying a solid foundation, meaning you're putting things in place right now in order to ensure that you're saving on tax. You're putting things in place right now to see what's the right approved fund. You're putting things in place right now to ensure any other investments or policies that you have are all structured and engineered in a way where it's starting to grow and give you maximum value. If you can do that, then it means when you come to the time that you are resigning, you're not starting resignation planning, right? You're continuing on the good work that you started before. Now, if you've not already done so, I encourage you to join my Retire vs. Resign Masterclass, where I compare both options for you, and then you're able to walk out of there knowing which route is most appropriate for you. Alternatively, if you are aiming at resigning, if you know that's the route that you want to take, uh, you can reach out to me via email. The, the email, the details are in the description on this YouTube channel below. Uh, I can't guarantee for sure that I will work with you. If you fit the profile of criteria that I work with, I'll provide you with more information and then I can start to give you more insights. But the key here is you want to start getting information. You want to first analyze, make sure that you know which route is best for you, and then use everything that you can at your disposal in order to ensure that you put yourself in the best possible position when you leave. Now, I hope you found the video insightful. In fact, I want to hear from you, right? Did you know about this? Did you take the time to calculate this? to see what actually could transpire. Uh, if you know of members that have passed away within the first five years, share with me, right? Because this is a video that I want you to engage with and also I want to ensure that it's delivering you the kind of value that I want to pass on. Please, I want to encourage you. It's important for other members to be aware of this. So please share the link with them. Let them know uh, that this support is available. Also, you can provide them links to the other videos. So I'm looking forward to hearing your comments below so that I know how this is helping you. Remember to give me a thumbs up sign so I know that this is on track for you. You can click the thumbs up sign to see if all is there and also to subscribe to the video so that you're able to get the latest content as soon as I produce it.